If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. Before we can calculate the magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force on the charge at the origin, what we want to do is give some labels to each charge. So, for example, we could call the charge at the origin A, the charge over here B, and then the third charge C. We're then going to take a look at Coulomb's law. Now, it turns out that we will have to use this formula twice. Once for the force that exists between charges A and B, and then a second time for the force that exists between charges A and C. And we'll begin with the force that B is exerting on A. And because we're looking at that force, we will use the notation BA. Now all we have to do is plug in the charge of B and the charge of A into the formula, as well as the distance between charges B and A, which is given as 0.3 meters. So here we have plugged in the known values. Notice that the value of KE is the 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. That's a standard value for KE. Also notice that the charges were converted into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the minus 9. If you go back to the original diagram, we can see the charges were given as nanocoulombs. But when we plug into Coulomb's law, we need to make sure that we express those in terms of coulombs. So we have to multiply by 10 to the minus 9. And once you calculate FBA, you should get a value approximately equal to 3 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. As for the direction, we'll notice that charge B and charge A have the same sign, so they're going to push away from each other. It's a repulsive force. So that means that charge B is going to push charge A away from it towards the left, and so we want to make sure we label the FBA pointing to the left. Next, we're going to calculate the force that charge C is exerting on charge A. So we're going to, in other words, calculate F sub CA. And we just have to plug in the charge of C and the charge of A and then the distance between them, which is given as 0.1 meters. So here are the known values plugged in. And when we compute that, we should get approximately 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons for the force that charge C exerts on charge A. Notice because they are oppositely charged that the direction would be downward because charge C would be attracting charge A towards itself. So we would have this downward projecting force. Now, to find the resultant force acting on the positive charge at the origin, we have to first align these two forces so that they are in that tip-to-tail fashion. So all that means is we're going to grab this force and we're just going to slide it over. And that way the tip of force BA is aligned with the tail of force CA. Now the resultant will be drawn from the origin out to the tip of force CA. Perhaps we can label that R for resultant, and then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant because we have ourselves a right triangle. So here's the expression for the resultant. On your calculator, you can plug in the value we found for FBA and the value we found for FCA. And when you do that, you should get approximately 1.38 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. That'll be the overall magnitude of the resultant force acting on the charge at the origin. We will also need the direction. And one way of doing that is just to find this angle here. And within that right triangle, we see that we have the opposite side labeled, as well as the adjacent side. So we can use the tangent. And indeed, to solve for the angle, we would take the inverse tangent of both sides. So the angle turns out to be the inverse tangent of FCA divided by FBA. So what you'll do is you'll plug in the value for FCA, the value for FBA, divide them, and take the inverse tangent. And you should get approximately 77 and a half degrees. And so you can express your answer for the direction as saying 77.5 degrees. And you'll notice that that angle is measured below the negative x-axis. This direction over here is our negative x-axis. The direction in the opposite way is the positive x-axis. So you can say 77.5 degrees below the negative x-axis as the overall direction of the resultant force acting on the charge at the origin. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you can send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen. 